Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet, Patch Hat Edition. I'm Violet. And I'm Ben. Okay, so Patrick finds video videos and articles online that he finds interesting. And we kind of go over them so to help you to understand, first of all, the kind of misleading information that mm -hmm. you can find out there, but also sometimes really good quality right. information. Right. Lately it's, well, anyway. Right. <laughs> so I don't know what's going to be coming at me today. Again, mm -hmm. it's a surprise. What do you have? Yeah. So today we're talking about it's an article I found uh, called like "Don't Believe All the Fad Diet the Fad Diet Type Losing Fat Boils Down to These Seven Basics." So basically, like for them, uh, whether it's paleo, keto, Mediterranean, it's all like the same fad. Like it's a temporary thing. Like there there are seven basics that you. Okay, so we're going to talk about seven basic so seven things basic, that we yeah. need to do to lose weight. And yeah. Okay. So so basically, they're okay. Yeah. Okay, let's so, go. So let's go through. Maybe through, it's going to be good. So first, 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 yeah, 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 they, they, it's going to be good, that's for sure. Okay, eat in a healthy calorie deficit. <laughs> well, okay, if I'm trying to lose weight and I decide to eat in a healthy calorie deficit, so mm. there's two things that's going to come out here that I think is interesting. One, what's a healthy calorie deficit? That makes me believe that the authors are trying to imply, don't bring your calories down too far, mm. right? So a healthy calorie deficit. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first thing I'm going to say is that, okay, what does that mean? I'm bringing my calories down enough to lose weight, but not mm. enough that I'm starving. Make sense? Makes sense. Okay. So I bring my calories down enough to lose weight, but not enough that I'm starving, which would mean that I'm going to, whatever I bring it down, I'm going to now eat at that level and try to lose weight. That means that I'm going to lose weight in a, a manner that's going to take me how much time? Let's say six months later, maybe I've lost a pound a month, two pounds two a month. Pound a month. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you two, two pounds a month. Six months later, I've lost two pounds a month. So that would be 12 pounds. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the chances that I'm doing a diet and all I want to lose is 12 pounds? But if that's your story, yay, you've accomplished your goal, mm. you stop your diet, you keep eating this way forever, you're good. But for the majority of people, you want to lose more than 12 pounds. Yeah. So here's the problem that I have. By bringing my, my calories down to a reasonable amount, and I've lost, I'm giving you a whole two pounds a month, that I'm now at... 12 pounds down six months later, what do we know about my metabolism? Mm, it's low my down. metabolism has restabilized to account for the amount of food that I'm eating. Mm -hmm. Now, because my metabolism has restabilized, what that now means is that I will no longer be losing. I'm staying here now at this level. So if I want to lose more weight, what happens? Mm -hmm. I have to bring mm -hmm. my calories down again. again. So now all of a sudden, their first mm -hmm. rule doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Right. Totally. Because in, now I've made it down a reasonable amount. If I want to lose any more, I'd have to go down even more yeah. than that. To a point I'm, where I'm no longer yourself. I'm no longer in a reasonable yeah. amount. Yeah, totally. So that's so, just the, the whole fact that the calorie deficit yeah. diet doesn't work because you've diminished the amount of food you're intaking to lose the weight. But then once you've lost whatever you're going to lose in six months, you're stuck there. Now, there's another point I want to make. What's the chances that you're going to stay at that level? A food intake because I brought my food intake down See, the thing and I'm not sure if anyways I'm gonna say what I want to say about yeah. keto the thing that I love about keto for most people trying to lose weight you never change the amount of food like so calorie that your body's okay. using because what you do is by bringing your carbohydrate number down your calorie so the calorie intake of carbohydrate does go down but you raise the fat intake. At those first few weeks, that's what you do. You bring down the carbs, you raise the fat a little bit to keep the amount of food you're actually eating, so the amount of energy coming mm -hmm. in, the same. And then when your body starts tapping this, that's when you let go of the extra fat. So what's happening? My calorie usage never changed. Yeah. But the only of... difference is instead of it coming from external, some of it's coming from internal. So I'm eating mm -hmm. some and my body's taking some from the bank. Yeah. And my energy levels, so my metabolism doesn't actually change. And in the end, you never store the, like, so instead of storing extra that by, I'm by eating. eating carbs, like you're eliminating what you don't need. Exactly. So, 
So yeah, so calorie deficit. And we have examples like you, you often talk about the Keto Savage. Didn't you do like a challenge with six, <gasps> 7,000 calories 6, per month, uh, per day for a month? 6,000. And didn't gain any weight, I think, yeah. right? 6,000 calories. And he didn't change his like workout habits and so 6,000 calories per day. That was like kind of crazy. So second basic, actually you'll see that it, like it's, it's not all bad, this article, like it's good. This one is good, but I, I feel like there's a little mistake in what they're, they're saying. Okay. So focus on healthy fats and yeah. lean proteins. Okay, so you know what? That's an interesting one. And I will, I will say that Thomas DeLawler made a comment about lean proteins that hmm, I, I could see why you would do that. So here's the okay. thing. Thomas DeLawler pointed out that when you purchase lean protein, so grass-fed beef is leaner than your regular grocery store beef. And, and, so, and he was pointing out this very interesting fact that I thought was kind of cool. When you buy any kind of meat that has fat in the meat, we kind of know that that means the animal didn't eat healthy because if it uh, ate healthy, it would be lean. Okay. So his 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 theory was buy the lean cuts of meat, add the fat back. Okay. So you add, you top it with olive oil, top it with butter, top okay, it with okay, okay. So this was his idea. I so I could see why they would say that and I'm not going to disagree with that one. I think that if you can afford mm. to buy that grass-fed beef, okay. grass-fed pork, you know, grass and and farm like far, like a free range, like not free range, but free roaming uh, fowl, right? So ber birds mm -hmm. and 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 have the better quality meat and then add the fat back. Okay. Go for it. However, for the average everyday person, that's going to be expensive, mm -hmm. especially if you're feeding a full family of how many. That might be too expensive to do. In that case, I think I do agree. Always, always try to use the better quality oils. Mm -hmm. It, the, meat, the meat doesn't have to be lean. Now, flip side of the coin. If their if their point is lean meat because lean meat is what you should be having and not having a normal amount of fat, I disagree with that. Mm. Because even when you buy a lean cut of beef or pork or whatever, there is still a bit of fat on it, and I think you should eat that fat. Mm. Okay. So I'm not if I answered that question. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Okay, so third basic, um, oh yeah, your favorite, don't totally give up carbs. Uh, okay, so well, like Jim said, 40% of your diet should, should come from carbs. That's, that's right, wrong. Totally. You don't want to have 40% of your energy coming from carbs yeah. because no. that's mm -hmm. like how much per how much hundred uh, of your daily intake is like so maybe it's gonna be it's gonna be like two hundred grams. It's gonna be like two hundred grams. That's that's way too much. Yeah. But I do agree with them. Don't give up all your carbs yeah, if you sure. like eating carbs. So I'm I'm peppering this in with a grain of salt, right? Because what I figured out for myself, I can actually go days with having like the minimum minimal amount of carbs because I've actually come quite happy eating meat with some fat and I'm fine. So I can go days doing a bit more of a carnivore style thing than a, a keto thing. But at the same time, I like carbohydrates. Like I like salad, mm -hmm. right? Actually, I think the thing that I love the most that I really have a hard time not having once in a while is a salad, a good salad. But I also like broccoli. I also like, you know, cauliflower, cauliflower mm -hmm. sometimes, depending on how yeah. he makes it. I, I, I like certain things. <laughs> So, you know, there are some green vegetables, there's some leafy greens that I like. So I, I wouldn't completely walk away. Mm -hmm. I like nuts. Mm -hmm. You're right. I, I do like cheese. So I like dairy. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is I can see where I would tell people you don't have to give up carbohydrates. The thing that I want to point out here is that the ketogenic lifestyle is not about not having carbs. Carnivore is about not having carbs. So if you do a carnivore lifestyle, of course, you're not going to have carbs. But mm. then that's a choice you're making. If you're doing a ketogenic lifestyle, all you're doing is keeping your total mm. grams of carbs at 20 grams or less per day. You know, I've said this a million times. If you want to have 20 grams of fruit and that's all you're going to have, although I don't agree with the amount of fructose that you would have in that situation, if you're doing that once in a blue moon, it's not a big deal. Mm. Once in a blue moon, the same way that if you went out once in a blue moon and had some alcohol, 
it's not a big deal. If you're doing it all the time, you need to ask yourself what's happening there. Mm. Yeah. And just to, I know we already like um, talked about that, but like in quotes, our, our body need, needs carbs to survive. It's fuel for our body, our body and our brain. So, okay, so that's absolutely do. a fallacy. Our mm. body can produce carbohydrates. Yeah. It's the one of the macronutrients that we actually can make. So we actually do not need to eat it. It's the one. We need to eat protein because there are essential amino acids that we cannot produce. We need to eat fats because there are essential fatty acids that we cannot produce. Yeah. We do not need to eat carbs. Our body can produce all the carbs we need. Yeah. I think I'm just going to stop there because I ranted on that before. <laughs> okay, the next two I think are more related to moving, like to, to being more active. So the next one, the next basic is to be active outside the gym. So... Go for walks, go for, and we can't not disagree with that. I Is really, it essential I, to... I, so basically, I'm not going to disagree with that, but I'm going to, I'm going to agree with it for, but for a different reason. Hmm. So. Don't do it to The number the one deficit. thing that Sorry. causes weight loss is what you eat. If you eat inappropriately, your weight will rise. If you eat appropriately and you're at a healthy weight, your weight will maintain. If you eat appropriately and you're overweight, your weight will come down. What you eat determines how much you weigh. 85%. The other 15% is movement. Hmm. But the bigger and much more important reason to move is general health. Hmm. The more you move your body, the better you feel. The one thing that we do know is that when you don't move your body, your muscles will atrophy. And that's a really bad situation to be in because then you can't do what you want to do. You're not going to be able to play with your kids. You're not going to be able to do any sports you love to do. You're not even going to be able to work appropriately. Mm -hmm. So you do need to move. It's important for us to move. You know, our bodies were meant to be in motion, but that's not what's going to help mm -hmm. us to be super, super um, thin or super, super healthy in the sense of weight, hmm. right? So it's what you eat. Yeah. So don't do it to enhance, I would say, the calorie deficit we just talked enhance? about first. Like, yeah. go to improve... No, the not calorie to deficit? Improve. No. Can, yeah. No. So you do it for health more than to yeah. have a bigger calorie deficit to lose weight faster. Look, the truth is, is that oh. when the more you move, the more the better your muscles function. The better your fu muscles function, yes, of course, the more energy that you use but what happens when you use more energy your base your your, your body looks for more energy mm. so the the interesting thing is that it's the size of you that determines how much energy you need to ingest this is something and but it also determines how much energy you put out mm. this is something that a lot of people don't understand if you see like pe people will say i have a slow metabolism and they're like you know <laughs> really big that's not true If you are really big, your metabolism is faster than mine. Your body is actively working, trying to use the energy that's there. Mm. That's not the problem. The problem is that you're ingesting, right? To match what mm. you're using and sometimes even more than what you're using. Mm. So I, it's a mistake and it's a fallacy that we have that we say that we, that we believe that because I'm larger, my metabolism is slower. Actually, it's the opposite. Mm. The larger you are, the faster your metabolism is. The thinner you are, the slower your metabolism is. So yes, exercise and working can create more muscle, which does help you to produce more energy, but then you're also going to want to eat more energy. Mm. So this idea that we're going to exercise away, or, mm, no, not really. Yeah. But you'll be healthier. You'll be, you'll be stronger. Mm -hmm. You'll be fitter. You'll be able to do more. Your body will feel good. You'll move easier. All of that's true, right? You're going to feel great. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I say, yes, move. Yeah. In the gym, outside the gym. Yeah. Move. Well, you stole my next one because the next one was more like in the gym. Like the, the well, I think I'm at sixth, so the fifth basics, uh, lift weights. But like, I think yes. we should do like something about like, uh, what's better for fat burning? W would it be like lift, lifting weight or cardio? I think it's always like this. Uh, yeah, yeah, but like to be, yeah, but, but like look, building there, muscle. There's, there's your, no difference. It, I'm telling you right now, it, it's eat food. Hmm. Everything else you're doing is about your body being healthy. Mm -hmm. But in order to get to a good weight, 
this the food you're yeah, eating. Yeah. So, that's, that's, so the thing about memory. physical exercise, though, with weights and stuff, mm -hmm. that I will say that makes a difference. Every person who has more muscle has more longevity. Mm. So, and that's again where it comes back to: you want to move, you want your body to work long term, mm -hmm. and it's like. People don't seem to under. That you're, we're so focused on being skinny mm. that we're not focused on the right thing. You need muscle to be able to move this body around properly and do what you want to be mm. able to do in life. And that's the mistake that we're all making. We're so focused on being thin that you see women and men. I can't even say women anymore. It used to be mostly women, but it's mm. women and men on the treadmill, on the elliptical, trying to lose weight, lose weight. And, you, and you're wasting yeah. time in the gym that you could be pumping some like real weights and building muscle. Because yeah. that's what's going to help you to be healthy long term. That's what's going to help you to live longer. Like study after study is showing that more muscle equals living longer. Mm. Right. And being skinny isn't the well apparently it's the thing but really if you're trying to be healthy it shouldn't be the thing mm. right having some nice muscle to help you to move this body around on the planet you know what's sad how many old people that you go to you know when you go to the old folks homes and you see these old people who can't barely get themselves out of a chair mm. why because they never worked on their muscle all they focused on was being thin well yeah now you're thin and you have no muscle mm. right compared to and it's, it's, you know, when you have people who, because of circumstance, had to work their entire life and didn't ever get a chance to retire, they move around. Mm. And guess what? Up until their dying days, they're still moving around. Right? But it's mm. reality. Because they have more muscle on them because they're constantly moving. They're constantly doing. They're constantly. Yeah. Right? It's important. Don't give up muscle for skinny mm. i can't say that enough <clears throat> don't give up muscle for skinny in the long term you're gonna regret it mm. and what about uh, the next one is hiit what about like high anything? intensity yeah, interval do you, do we training? have anything like we already covered like uh, high intensity, a bit more, high intensity yeah. interval training is supposed to be really good for your cardiovascular health so like your yeah. heart health and um it's supposed to also be good in the sense that it's less um impactful like in a negative way on the body so okay. joints and whatever because it's like high intensity doesn't necessarily have to be high impact yeah. so if you're doing a low impact but high intensity interval training that can be very health healthy um and you it's not but, but it's, again none of this has anything to do with weight loss which no. is what yeah. i'm finding kind and of frustrating is, yeah. about this is like well this is the last three of them where there it has more to do with long-term health longevity yeah. and like which is great and mm -hmm. i love it but it's not about weight loss mm -hmm. so they're calling they're calling these things fads so the diet is a fad but yet the things you're talking about has nothing to do with dieting Dieting's. so you know mm -hmm. but i do agree high intensity interval trainings from all of what i've heard i still haven't heard anything negative about it yeah. so last one uh, last one um oh yeah last one i think we all will agree like get enough sleep well, we all oh know for that. sure like, yeah for sure 100%. good sleep like uh, when, when you get enough sleep your body has the opportunity to replenish and rebuild so getting enough sleep. The other thing about getting enough sleep is that when you're, when you're like, when you sleep enough, I'm trying to remember how this goes now, because I remember that it was part of a conversation I had, but when you sleep enough and your body has a chance to completely get into all the different levels of sleep and come back through, there's something in that that resets your your system apparently it's mm -hmm. also about sleeping the right hours apparently there's yeah. there's even that like um i remember reading a book that was talking about how if you don't go to if you go to sleep after 10 or 10 30 the chance that your body will be able to go through all these processes that it needs to do in the course of the night is not there okay so like there's actually a time interval dependent on like where you your, your circadian rhythms and, okay, okay, okay so it's, it's a very apparently complicated process but at the end of the day i remember being explained that for example people who end up with sleep apnea and people who end up with all these issues part of it is the time that you sleep and the length of time that you sleep mm. so going to bed at the right time but also sleeping long enough mm. 
I don't understand all the complicated ins and outs of it, but I do know mm. that that's something I've heard has a very large impact on your weight. Yeah. Is there a thing also about like uh, not eating after a certain hour? I think like you shouldn't eat after like eight or seven, even seven, like to give your body time to, to digest before going to sleep and just improve, like this could improve your, uh, your weight slash fat burning, losing. I actually feel like that's more of a myth than anything else, but okay. I don't have, I don't know for sure. I can't say okay. one way or the other. What I do know is that theoretically, if that's a huge thing, then I shouldn't have lost any of the weight that I lost because mm. I regularly yeah. have supper eight or later, mm. 8 p.m. or later. Yeah, So like, but I, there might be some validity to it, but I don't know what the actual okay. like details of it are. I've heard it a bunch of times, mm -hmm. but I honestly, part of me, there's two parts because if you're eating a carbohydrate high meal, you're putting your body in a situation where there's a lot of carbs to have to process. Oh. Would that possibly interfere with your ability to sleep well? Probably. Because your body is dealing with putting the carbs away, fighting the inflammation and all the other things that you just introduced mm -hmm. before going to bed. Luckily for me and for you, we're not eating high carb meals before going into our evening. Um, so that's one part of it. Now, at the same time, like I said, although I've heard that going to sleep at a certain time and sleeping and all that stuff is supposed to help people to lose weight. Again, do I ever get to bed before <laughs> 11, 12 mm -hmm. o'clock? And yet I still lost all the weight, mm -hmm. but I still think it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. According to all the research, I think you're always aiming to do what's right for, for like the best practice. And so I, I kind of wonder how much better might I feel if I could get to bed at 10, mm -hmm. right. And actually get that, that like sleep and wake up that little bit earlier and have more of that daytime. Like, cause that's the other mm -hmm. thing when you get up, when you go to bed earlier, you get up earlier and you get more of that daytime light. So I've even heard people talking about the idea that you should go outside and if you can, if the weather is good, put your feet in the grass and like ground, do some grounding and all these other things. So mm. again, there's a lot of stuff that I don't fully understand yet, but I do agree with the whole idea that it's important to get sleep for health. Um, and from everything I've been told, getting enough sleep should help mm. you to be at a healthier weight. Okay. So we start yoga this week at six every morning. In front of the house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the grass. On the grass, of course. <laughs> On the grass. But again, it's, it's supposed to be healthier, right? Yeah. So, um, no, I, those are some interesting. I mean, yeah. some of them were well, some of them were positive. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to say that it's not because be, it's not because like sometimes if you read an article or see a video, uh, like they they do say stuff that sounds like they're against a diet and against something where like actually all those those uh, those basics were like some kind of applicable so except maybe one with the calorie but like they're not super incompatible with keto or with paleo or with like those those what those basics made sense what i don't understand is why they called them fads and i think really what mm. was happening is that they're just trying to get people to read the article Oh, maybe. So they, they call it a fad so that you're going to be like, oh, why is it a fad? And then I go through things mm. that are pretty healthy to do and that people sh could be trying to, should be trying to do most of them, most of them, yeah. or things that you should be trying to do. I think the carb thing and the calorie thing were the two things yeah. we would say absolutely not. But other than that, like they didn't have anything in there that was so crazy that you're like, oh, that. like you shouldn't be doing that. Right. Yeah. And they weren't necessarily bashing any one particular diet. So I don't know why the yeah. title was actually written mm. the way that it was written. Almost, I feel like it was to incite people to read the article to see like, yeah. why were they going to say no? But then in, in actuality, they gave seven pretty okay pretty things. Okay things, yeah. Yeah. So, I would say that that article this week was middle of the road. Mm. Middle of the road, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so I want to thank you for watching Mind Blowing Health and Wellness Violet Patch Hat Edition. If you're new here, please consider subscribing because we make these videos every week. I want to also remind everyone that I do have a Patreon account. If you would like to go and you can support the channel at Patreon slash Violet Rivera. I love making these videos for you guys. We both do. Mm -hmm. And it's really fun to talk to you about stuff like this that helps us to learn together. And even, you know, there's some stuff that maybe I want to investigate some mm -hmm. more. So like the sleep stuff. Mm -hmm. 
So it always gives uh, interesting things to talk about and to, and to look into. Thanks for joining us. Can't wait to talk to you guys next week. Bye.